Hello everyone. I did my movement analysis on Kenneth. Before we start, um, the movements that I analyzed were his broad jump, his 40 yard dash, and his 5-10-5 shuttle run. Um, just some quick background information on Kenneth. Um, he's 21 years old. He's 5'7", weighs 137 pounds. Um, he doesn't play a current sport right now at the moment. Um, major injuries. He sprained both his right and left ankle while playing basketball at a younger age. Um, he's right hand dominant and right leg dominant as well. Um, he has a neutral arch in, in his foot, so he's flat footed when he walks. And only that, his left and right medial malleolus um, are, like, are like really pronounced, so they protrude inward um, when he walks. So, I, inside his, like, on the medial sides of his um, ankles, they kind of like shift inward when he walks. You can really see it. Um, broad jump. The muscles that are engaged during a broad jump are hip extension, knee extension, shoulder flexion extension, trunk extension, and ankle plantar flexion. To go even deeper, the gluteus maximus, the semimimosis, semitendinosus, and the bicep femoris are activated. Um, the rectus femoris, vastus medialis, as well as the lateralis are also engaged. Um, the anterior deltoid and the pectoralis major are engaged. The erector spinae muscles are engaged as well. Um, and the gastrocnemius and the, the gastrocnemius and the plantar and the plantaris and the soleus are also engaged in the ankle. Um, other muscles that like kind of help with the broad jump movement. But don't but don't really play a big a crucial part in the in the um in the exercise are the trapezius the deltoids the biceps um, they're all flexed while performing this this um exercise but they don't really play a main part in it all they really do is just help create momentum. Um, the bones engaged during this um, exercise are the pelvic girdle, the femur, the tibia, the fibula, the patella, the tarsals, metatarsals, and the phalanges of the toes. Um, these, all of these um, bones, major bone um, structures help absorb the impact when performing the jump. So all of the force and the power that's being created during the beginning of the jump and once you land, all of that is absorbed through your, your phalanges or your toes and your metatarsals and it goes all the way up. Um, the neurological properties required to perform this jump are, are type 2A uh, fast twitch muscles. These muscles are oxidative, um, they're 80 to 90 meters per second conduction speed, the 30 to 50 meter meter per second contraction time. Um, they are fatigue resistant um, and they create moderate tension. Not only that, the type 2 B muscle fibers are also engaged during the broad jump. They're also fast towards glycolytic. They're innervated by large motor neurons. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, they're 30 to 40 meters per second contraction time, large neurons to fiber ratio, and but they create high tension. Um, proper broad jump form. Step one, you, you need to create a counter movement. Um, the hips, your hands, legs, and core muscles are engaged. Weight shifts forward with leg and core muscle contractions. 
um, triple extension of hips, knees, and ankles. I need to be engaged while throwing the arms forward, leaving leaving the ground at a 45 degree angle. Um, forward knee drive, bringing heels toward butt. Um, arms begin to be reeled back in once you're at the peak part of the lift, kind of returning back towards the ground. Um, your hips are hinged again, and your knees are extended with shins and ankles leading descent towards the ground. Um, your hips are hinged still, and knees and ankles are flexed with eccentric loading for force absorption. So, basically, explaining this even more, basically, when you're starting off the jump, you should really get a good counter movement going, a, a, a real explosive counter movement so you can carry the force and velocity that you're creating at the bottom of the jump to carry you up up forward and out and not just up um and you want to just use your arms to create as much momentum as you can so you're not just jumping up and down you want to get distance with the broad jump um, some common broad jump dysfunctions, so things that people may not do correctly or may not do at all when they're performing a broad jump is they may have little to no counter movement at all um, when performing the broad jump at the start of it. Uh, they may not swing their arms at all. They may just jump. Um, when landing, they may land on their heels and not on the balls of their feet. Um, they may have a negative knee valgus, so that's when they're either, when they're beginning their jump, which is something that you'll see in the next few slides when um, watching um, Ken Ken perform his jump. Is his knees kind of shift inward, so they have like that that V looking shape when he's beginning to jump. Um, there's no high heel recovery at the top or in simple terms at like the high phase of the jump. So basically, um, when you don't bring your heels towards your butt at the top of the jump, you kind of just leave your leave your heels like parallel to the ground. So kind of like you don't bring your your hips and your and your heels with you at the initiation of the jump. Um, landing with your feet too far in front of you. Is one thing that people tend to do a lot. They really tend to um, let their heels reach the ground first instead of completing the entire jump. So they want to get their feet on the ground as, as soon as possible instead of kind of like sweeping your arms through a little bit like a long jump. Um, and just lack of stability in the ankles and overall total balance. So um, if you have... Pretty much if you have like weak ankles or not that good of like angle stability, when you land, you might tend to like try to like gather yourself or trying not to fall for it because you can't kind of like stick the landing. Um, during the broad jump analysis that I, that I watched with, uh, that I watched of Ken, um, I saw that he did he, he did have good counter movement in his lower body. Um, he did have good arm swing. But one thing that I did realize that kind of was, was off was that his, his knees bend inward at the start of the jump. Um, he doesn't bring his heels with him with his butt. Uh, they kind of stay parallel to the floor when he's uh, jumping and when he's like at the peak part of his jump. Um, he lands with his legs in front of him, uh, in front of his center of mass instead of underneath him. So he he lands with his with his legs in front of him pretty much instead of landing underneath him, kind of kind of bringing everything too far in front of him. Um, and he lands heel to toe instead of on the balls of his feet. So which results in him having trouble stabilizing himself at the end point of his jump which is what you will see. Let's watch closely as his knees kind of shift inward.
And as he stumbles to try to stick the landing. I kind of have two, well, as you guys can see, I have two videos so you can get two, two different angles. Just watch closely. That's the chief. Yeah, it's good arm swing, good kind of movement at the initiation of his jump. But as he gets to the, the end of it, he lands too far in front of him, which makes him have to kind of uh, quickly uh, gather himself so he can stick the landing. Um, another uh, movement that I assess with um, Ken is a 40 yard dash. The muscles engaged in this are hip extension, knee extension, ankle plantar flexion, shoulder flexion and extension, um, hip flexion, knee flexion, and ankle dorsiflexion. During the acceleration phase, which is something I call the push phase, um, the gluteus maximus the semi-membranosis, the, the semi-tendinosis, and the bicep femoris are all engaged during this um, phase of the 40-yard dash, as well as the rectus femoris, the vastus medialis, and the lateralis, um, the gastrocnemius, and the plantaris and the soleus are, are all also um, engaged during this um, exercise, uh, as well as um, anterior deltoid and pectoralis major, um, are all flexed, and the posterior deltoid, the latissimus dorsi, and the teres and the teres major are extended. So, um, just de depending on how, how, excuse me, um, how they're lined up on the line for the 40 yard dash, just depends on what shoulders, I mean, well, what shoulder is flexed and which one is extended. But either way it goes. They're both going to be flexed and extended while carrying out the um, entire movement. Um, and during the max and during during the max velocity phase, um, the rectus femoris, the iliopsoas, the sartorius, and the pectineus are also all engaged. Um, once again, the semimembranosus, the semitendinosus, the popliteus, and the Sartorius are, all, are all also engaged during this. Um, and a key thing that a lot of people don't really understand when running, running period or doing like any sprint drills are like your ankles must be dorsiflexed. Um, that's where most of your, your quick reaction and your ground co contact comes from. When you're plantar flex, when you're plantar flexed, um, when completing certain spring drills, it's all wasted motion because your foot has to collapse just to get back to that to that to that ball of foot motion or that that ball of foot contact with the ground or you're just flat footed and you constantly running heel to toe, heel to toe, which can lead to shin splint injuries and just a lot of like um, knee pain traveling up from the shins because you have bad running mechanics. Um, the bones that are engaged during the 40 yard dash are the femur, the tibia, the fibula, the tela, metatarsals, and flannels of the foot, um, the pelvic girdle, so the sacrum, the coccyx, uh, and the left and right ischium and ilium. Um, for upper extremities, uh, the trunk, the humerus, the scapula, vertebrae, radius, the ulna, and the wrist are all engage when running the 40 yard dash from the start to the finish. Um, these are pictures of how you should look when you're in your 40 yard, when you're just starting out your 40 yard dash as far as 
coming out of that, that first step of the push phase. Um, so once again, the same muscle fibers are all engaged during this during this um this uh, movement because it's a fast movement, it's a rapid movement, and it requires a lot of type two muscle fibers to to be um to be used in order to carry out the movement. Um, Well, um, and another pitch I have is when you're in your max, when you're in your max velocity phase. So that tall phase, when you're on, when you're on top of your run, um, your hips should be up, uh, your toes should still be dorsiflex. Um, you're engaging your core, your hip flexors as well. And uh, and the main thing when when you're in this phase is to just stay tall. Um, Stay relaxed, your shoulders should be down, you're just stroking your arms through your hips. Um, you're not really tight. Um, your shoulders should be down and you're just 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 fluidly stroking through your hips. Um, one thing I, I always t uh, tell athletes that I coach sometimes um, are, well actually all the time, just, just like rigid muscles move slow. So when you're tight and you're straining, trying to, trying to run and you're thinking, when you tighten up, you're running fast. You're you're not you're running even slower because you're basically like you're you're tensing up, trying to make the line come to you faster when it's never going to come to you faster. So the main thing uh, when completing the push phase of the 40 yard dash as well as the the mass velocity phase is to just stay fluid, um, stay stay aggressive, but stay fluid, relax. And don't tense up, and just in that max velocity phase as well. Just just put your feet down. It's it's basically like you're marching in place but fast. You you just focus on putting your feet down and just stepping over uh, your knee. Um, proper 40 yard dash mechanics. Um, for the initial setup. Uh, your weight should be distributed equally throughout the body, uh, not too far forward or, or too far backwards. Um, if right knee is up in starting position, then your left arm should be up in a, up on the starting line to prop yourself up at the start. Right arm should be up when ready to take off and vice versa. Uh, both knees should be bent and loaded. Um, head, is, head is in neutral position, so you're not looking up at something when you're in the start of the 40 yard dash, your head should be relaxed, um, and just in a neutral position. Um, your weight should be on the balls of your feet. Ankles should be loaded to create good push. Um, in the acceleration phase, you should push out at a 45 degree angle, getting triple extension through your hips, knees, and ankles, using your arms to project your body horizontally. Um, when you're accelerating, you never want to want to project vertically you want to project horizontally because you don't get you don't cover any ground trying to trying to push vertically while everyone is pushing horizontally you're trying to push vertically and you're not going anywhere so the so the main focus is to project yourself out forward not up and out just forward um continue to push to create velocity power and momentum until your body gradually rises um, I kind of use this analogy a lot when I'm um, when I'm volunteering and, and like coaching and stuff. It's kind of similar to how an airplane takes off on a runway. Um, it just doesn't get on the runway; it just goes straight up in the air. It has to create the speed and, and the momentum and the power to to get itself at that max velocity. A phase to get up into the air so um, yeah it's kind of the same way as an airplane as a how an airplane just, just gradually rises um, you hold it you hold this phase for about 20 25 meters um, just basically until you feel like um, you're ready to come up and start running um, but don't 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 ever rush it just let it come to you 
um, ankle should be dorsiflex so foot doesn't have to come heel to toe and so there's uh, not too much plantar flexion at the beginning um at right here as you see in the center i have a picture of how a how a ideal a 40 yard dash stance to look three point stance crowd start um and right here i have a another picture of like a phase pretty much of how excuse me the 40 yard dash phase should look you in your drive phase for about 10 20 yards 20 meters then after that you gradually start to transition into that max v excuse me uh that that max velocity phase you stand up and you're just you're just running you just relax you're smooth you're just stroking through your hips pump your arms through your hips and just uh pushing pretty much and just maintaining trying to get faster each and every time um some common dysfunctions when running a 40 yard dash is uh weight you know, your weight is distributed unevenly throughout your body at the initial start um arm swing and drive phase isn't used forcefully or at all some people i see just pop straight up when they when they start running um and don't use their arms at all to help them to help project themselves um they're flat footed and their foot isn't dorsal flexed at all i can almost sometimes when i'm hearing uh athletes run and i'm cueing them to do certain things and they're flat footed i can literally like hear their foot like just pound the ground and it's it's like hearing chalk against a blackboard it's it just makes me cringe because i know it's wrong um and like i said yeah they tend to pop up too early not letting that not executing that full drive phase um their hips are too low sometimes when they're in that crowd start uh their trunk isn't well, their trunk is evenly parallel with the ground so excuse me kind of relating back to the um to the hips their their hips are just too low or they're too high you want to have it parallel so it's not too high and too low um lack of ankle strength and just stability so like i said before um when they're when they're running and if their ankles are plantar flex their their foot has to keep collapsing back on the ground so it's coming toe heel toe heel toe heel instead of straight ball of foot ball of foot striking the ground um when i watched this uh video of ken doing a 40 yard dash um his right his right knee is at his chest um his weight is distributed unequally majority of, of his weight is on his left leg his feet are too far apart both of his hands are on the ground um when they should be opposite arm opposite foot arch of vertebrae is too low um which translates to his hips being low at initial start he's flat footed throughout the entire run um and you'll be able to see it when i play the video he doesn't get triple extension during the during the selection phase so he's basically not at not at full basically he's just not at full extension so he's not getting that that big split that big push um when he's accelerating uh he, he pops up way too early so he, he doesn't even carry out the drive phase at all and his head is in neutral he's looking up at us a recording when he's uh completing the uh, 40. you'll be able to see it here look closely at his ankles uh, obviously you can see how he's flat-footed and his toes aren't dorsal flexed at all
on these or other uh, video angles that I took of, of this 40 yard dash. Um, you can guys, you guys can watch him and just see how at every angle he's still um, not dorsiflexing his foot. Uh, he doesn't carry out the push phase um, at all, and he's running across his body as well. Um, the 5-10-5 cone drill muscles that are engaged during this uh, movement are hip flexion and extension, hip abduction and adduction, and hip rotation. So the, the iliacus, the psoas major, the rectus femoris, the sartorius, the pectineus, the gluteus maximus, the semimembranosus, the semitendinosus, and the bicep femoris are all engaged during hip extension and flexion. Um, once again, the sartorius, the pectineus, the adductor long, uh, longus, the brevis, and the magnus um, are all uh, engaged during this exercise, I mean during this uh, movement, as well as the gluteus medius and minimus and the tensor uh, fasciae lata. Um, and, and with their rotation, the uh, iliacus, the gluteus maximus and minimus and the piriformis are all engaged as well. Bones that are uh, engaged during this movement are the femur, the tibia, the fibula, the patella, the, the metatarsals and flanges of the foot, um, the sacrum, the coccyx, and the left and the right ischium and ilium, um, as well as the humerus, the scapula, the vertebrae, radius, the ulna, and the wrist. Um, so, same thing as in the other past two slides I mean this is a fast a fast twitch um, movement type 2 muscle fibers are going to be used in this um, regardless of the fact uh, and this is a picture of how the movement how like basically how a simulation of, of, of the movement um, is done I attached the link to um, a video of um, a man Conducting and showing you how to do the 5105 cone drill um, demonstrates each side to go to, how you should be lined up, how you should be standing, and um, just how to attack the drill properly. Um, proper form to do with this is you should be in the athletic stance, feet shoulder width apart, weight on balls of feet. Uh, balls of foot not resting back on heels um, your feet are equally distant from starting point and during the change of direction phase uh, your inside leg is loaded uh, you touch the cone with the outside hand and foot lower your hips to to control your body as well as to decelerate and uh, you sprint through the middle cone once uh, the once the athlete has touched both cones Um, common dysfunctions when uh, completing a 5 to 5 drill. Uh, sometimes the, the athlete's posture while completing the drill is just too tall. Uh, he should be low and somewhat parallel to the ground. Um, the athlete doesn't use arms during drill. Uh, stutter stepping in order to decelerate and, main, and maintain balance or explosion uh, through, throughout the drill instead of dropping the hips. Um, weight is on outside leg 
um, and lack of ankle stability and overall total body control uh, and balance. So in, in the next video that I'll uh, show you guys, you'll be able to tell how, how, how Ken stutter steps to gain control and that ankle stability so he can kind of plant, plant and change direction to, to go to the next uh, cone. Um, when analyzing these two videos, I noticed how his starting position should be lower. Um, just a tad bit. It's not too bad, but he should be a little bit lower so he can really push off his um, his uh, inside leg. Um, he hardly pumps his arms during the drill. Just casually, just pumps his arms. Um, doesn't drop it. He doesn't drop it. He doesn't drop his hips low enough to to, to touch the cone. Um, he's running tall throughout the entire drill. He's flat-footed once again, uh, not on the balls of his foot, feet when running, nor in change of direction phases. Um, and he stutter steps when decelerating in order to control momentum when changing direction from cone to cone. My, my hypothesis. According to the balance error scoring system, so which is also known as the best test, it measures static it measures it measures static post postural stability. Um based on Ken's balance and stability test, he scored in the bottom percentile, meaning his balance and overall stability level plays a role in his ability to de decelerate properly, keep his foot dorsiflexed throughout a sprint, strike the ground with the ball of his foot properly or land on the ball of his foot in a broad jump. I would say Ken's overall body control and balance takes a hit because of the muscles surrounding his ankles lacking the stability around his medial malleolus to stabilize him when, um, when performing certain exercises, specifically the agility drill. He can't drop his hips and decelerate properly to change direction because his ankles can't stabilize him to plant and go into a different direction fluidly without him having to start a stutter step to slow down and go again. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you guys can see that, see the results of his of his um, balance and stability test, but uh, it does show that he scored in the kind of in the lower category, so not the best. Um, his overall performance during the drills. Um, his knees bend inward at start of run. I mean, jump. Uh, he lands heel to toe instead of ball of foot, resulting in having uh, trouble stabilizing himself at end point of jump. Um, another thing is he's he's flat footed throughout his entire 40 yard dash. Um, doesn't get triple extension during acceleration phase. Um, it's 5 10 5 cone drill. Doesn't drop hips low enough to to touch cone, running taut throughout the entire drill, flat footed, not on ball of foot when running, um, nor in changing direction phases, and he stutter steps when decelerating in order to control momentum when changing direction from cone to cone. Um, all three movements really, um, I mean, all three movements during this analysis really highlight how Ken's ankle stability isn't the best and needs stabilization work. Ways to fix it. Um, for the broad jump stability, I would say uh, dumbbell squats into push press, um, barbell split squats, dumbbell snatch, um, heavy dumbbell walk and carry each side 20 meters, deadlifting, power cleans, um, ankle stretching, and, sh and strengthening exercises. Um, examples of those would be like calf raises, toe pulls with a towel, single leg stability cushion discs. Uh, so like the like the the circular rubber um, discs that are in like in like athletic training rooms for like ankle 
like an ankle stability or people who like sprain their ankle or anything you can like balance on that or you can use the little blue foam pad to um do like single leg uh, balancing drills on um you can also roll out the bottom of your foot with a golf ball uh, a lot of, a lot of people don't really know but um of course you have muscles at the bottom of your foot and when those muscles are kind of like beat up after like a long day or like a long week of practice and you don't really like stretch them out uh your foot muscles kind of kind of kind of correlate what your Achilles uh feel or how your Achilles feel and how it functions and <laughs> excuse me um whatever your Achilles does correlates to what your calf does so if your foot is is tight then your Achilles is going to be tight which correlates to your calf being tight it's all it's all really a, a domino effect in the end um the 40 yard dash um, he's flat-footed, so things to fix would be like proper sprint warm-up uh, drills that consists of him like, uh, do, excuse me, of him doing like the the proper form and um, really like emphasizing him the dorsal flexing his foot and getting his toe up when he's uh, performing these drills or doing certain sprint sprint drills. Um, heel walks, toe walks, inversion and eversion walks, so walking like on the side of your foot or and on the inside of your arches can can help with ankle stability um, and also mobility as well. Um, sled pulls, uh, simulating the acceleration phase while pulling sled to gain power and stability while keeping the toe dorsal flex, as well as um, sitting on like a bench and performing uh, kettlebell ankle raises. So putting the kettlebell handle on like your toe and just doing toe raises with them that'll um, help with like um, shin splints as well as like strengthening um, the ankle and the 510 cone drill um, working on like lateral line hop drills two feet and then like single leg um, speed skater jump side to side uh, lateral lunges focusing on getting like a deep stretch uh, so you can like perform the movement when you have perform the movement when you have to like drop your hips so you can touch the line and then change direction to to go into the other direction um uh barbell split squat jumps um yoga uh that'll help with like body control mainly um being able to like hold a position for for a certain period of time and keep like your hips and all your lower extremities and just total body in general just just keep everything intact and and functioning properly so you can be able to hold different positions um sideways single leg mini hurdle hops so just performing lateral movements um in general will will kind of correlate to helping um his his uh five ten five cone drill uh to be better um and hurdle hops over uh track hurdles for explosion um that'll help with actually all all three um uh, movements uh, in general because with the broad jump you're kind of in that in that loading phase and trying to like get out of it so hurdle hops that'll help with um explosion and and like getting out of that that like basically like getting out of that that hole pretty much and you want to like jump like explode out to, to get out of that hole so that'll help with it um these are the sources that i use for my um, movement analysis um thank you guys for listening you have a good night